Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Lenora, how good was that Canva intro? That was an amazing intro. And I was typing it in the background going, this looks amazing. It was oh, awesome. Private chat. Amazing. <laughs> okay. Welcome to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Um, we got a boring one for you. That's, that's all I'm going to mm -hmm. say. So if you're a regular listener, subscriber, thank you. You could just go ahead and Take skip over this episode because we're not having any fun before recording this. No, I am so excited for today's episode. It's a topic that um, probably shouldn't be fun, I think, rewriting your inner narrative, which is really, really important and serious. And we're going to do our best to have way too much fun talking about it. So uh, before we get any further into this madness, I got to welcome all my guests here. Uh, Lenora, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. We did have a ton of fun even before we hit record. So I am thrilled to be here with you. My biggest regret of today is not hitting record as soon as we got on camera because Full disclosure, you just never know with people what you're going to get, right? So I understand that. I didn't hit record, <laughs> but here we are. We're rewriting our inner narrative, that evil voice in our head. It's nagging. It's always telling us we're stupid. Speaking for myself, I'm not going to project that on anybody else. But what? how How do you do this? It, do you have a company that does this? Do you have a, Are you a, a coach, a consultant? What do you call yourself? I call myself, often I'm referred to as the voice lady. And I consider myself a speaker, author, communication specialist, and voice coach. Those are the titles. And it's mostly because of where I was with my internal dialogue and where I am now and how I help people move through that whole fun navigating that arena. Mm, never fun, the navigation portion, portion, I'm sure. But I'm curious. So, yes, that's a lot of titles. Uh, I love the voice lady. That's a super cool title. But tell me, you mentioned your past, where you were and where you went through this transition. Um, how did you come upon being the voice lady and helping people through this? Over a number of years, I struggled very significantly with an eating disorder, which was very out of control. And throughout the time that I was working incredibly hard to help myself and I would, I found personal development and I'd read books and blogs and videos and as hard as I kept trying, I could not break the cycle that I was in. And it wasn't until I was getting my second false tooth, which is something that happened from the eating disorder that I was experiencing. As I stood up to leave the dentist office that day, I heard, maybe there's something you just don't know yet. So even though the voices in my head had been vicious and they were calling me stupid and pathetic and telling me how awful I was, that shift in maybe there's something you just don't know yet, really helped me get the courage I needed to reach out to other people and ask for help. And I had not told any of my friends. I hadn't told anybody in my family because I was so horrified and mortified of my own behavior. That's why I didn't ask for help. And I really thought I was stupid. And, you know, you can figure it out. You'll muscle through. You'll just keep going. Just keep pushing. And I had gone as hard as I could in helping myself. And that was the next step for me was help myself by asking for help. And once I did that, my entire life changed, entire life changed. Yeah, that's such a powerful story. And I love that you you help people through this without the need for dental surgery. I think that's <laughs> that's a really always, good. Always a win. Always a, a win. Great, yes. great option. Um, yeah. No, but I, on a serious note, it is, a the, I think the hardest thing in in any sort of change process is the first step of admitting there's a problem, of course, or that you struggle with something or that there's a roadblock, whatever the language you want to use around it. Mm -hmm. And then it's the seeking help or guidance. And uh, is it is it the seeking guidance or the admitting struggle part that people usually deal with the most when they come to you? I think it is asking for help outside of themselves. 
especially mm. because we were, at least for me, I'm in, in, I'm in, I'm 38 and I was often, uh, when I grew up, I actually was considered to have a learning disability. And I took that on as 12 years old that, oh, I must be stupid. Oh, I must need a lot of help because I had teachers and coaches and tutors of all sorts helping me constantly. And by the time that I was 19 and I was in college, I was fried. And I thought, you know what? I'll figure it out myself. And I stopped asking for help. So I knew I had difficulties because it's just something I happened to be aware of. And I, even with an eating disorder, I knew the habits that I had were not safe. They were not in my best interest. According to my subconscious that was trying to keep me safe, they, they absolutely were in my best interest. And in asking for help, I had felt so much shame and so much embarrassment, so much horrification of my own behavior that I wouldn't ask for help. And even as I did, I worked with several coaches even before finding somebody who really resonated with me, of which I am a huge supporter for. Find who resonates with you. If you go to a therapist, if you go to a doctor, if you go to a coach, if you don't feel like it's a match, no problem. Keep looking. They're not the only one out there. And in finding somebody that resonated with me, it still took time to admit to them exactly what I was doing. And thankfully, we had built enough of a rapport, enough of a trust, where when you say these things that you're embarrassed by, that you're horrified by, that you're shameful about, when you say these things to somebody else, and they look at you and they're like, it's okay. I, it's okay. I got you. Huge, huge shift in being seen and heard, but more importantly, understood and not judged. That's the very specific line for me is that it's not about a judgment. And when you work with a coach or when you work with a therapist or a doctor, it shouldn't be a, you are the problem. It should be, we have a problem. Can you help me with this? And when you can approach it like that and say, I have, versus I am, you even have that separation of association. I have a problem. Can you help me? And when somebody's openly there to say, yeah, that's okay. Let's, let's work on this together. I'm right here with you. Your entire being literally feels it. Uh, yeah, that's actually really interesting. I, I talk about that a lot with, with our clients and with myself too, because so I have been diagnosed with several uh, incurable autoimmune diseases. And I made this shift a long time ago when I was entering the world of personal development from I am to I have to... I have been diagnosed and the, mm -hmm. the path is actually, it's been monumental in dealing with those issues because I am, and I have your brain wants to claim them. And with your, your internal language, when you were saying, when you were a kid, you were diagnosed with a learning disability. Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to ask what specifically that was? They had really, at the time it was, I think 1996, they had specifically said learning disability and I had needed yeah a lot of extra support in being presented with information. I needed auditory input. I needed visual input. I need tactile kinesthetic, you know, all those things that they, they had said and then, um, or ways of interpreting information, excuse me. And also I needed additional time on tests and special classes where I didn't have to take things that were as hard as the other students, which part of your brain could be like, oh, well, that's good. I don't have to take calculus. And that other part of your brain is like, smart enough for that. And it really, the voices in our head, we're constantly talking to ourselves all the time. What are the voices saying? That's what my voices were saying. Yeah. It's so your voice is said because someone else said you have, you said I have, and then mm -hmm. you did I not am. want to relinquish control of that. And you, then it obviously impacted you and led it led to, um, you know, an eating disorder, which is just a manifestation of the ownership of the problem, mm -hmm. which happens to everybody when we say I have and I am, and it's the shift and the the fixing of the voices. But I think what's probably really fascinating is when you got out of that mindset and, and you stopped saying I have a learning disability, if I had to guess today, you probably understand information at a depth that most people can never even comprehend because you have the need and the gift of hearing it from multiple different angles. Am I right on that? That was an amazing reframe, Brandon. 
Mm. I uh, I just pulled that out of thin air, but I'm glad I, you liked it. So <laughs> amazing download from thin air. That was phenomenal. Um, no, but I think the, the power in, in language and language goes into your thoughts as well. This is why I love this conversation. And especially as an entrepreneur and for business owners, this is key, not only for yourselves, but for your team, because your teammates and your employees are having these dialogues with themselves based on what you tell them and how you interact with them. It's, it's holistic in your organization. So moving from the, you know, how, how do we deal with it? And then how do we rewrite our story and rewrite our thoughts? What are some of the ways we can start to do that as, as entrepreneurs and then also helping our, our teammates through this? I love that question. So I am a, I am, so there you go. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I identify as a board certified speech language pathologist. So language, I have thought a lot about language and I'm also Italian, so I really enjoy talking. <laughs> language is key. Language is the key to how we navigate through this world, how we literally understand information, how we process information, how we express information. It all is our language, how we're interpreting things. So when it comes to your language, they often say 70 plus percent of what we're saying is nonverbal, which means your, your facial expressions and your tone and your gestures. These are all what we consider nonverbal. And 70% of what you're saying is nonverbal and that's what's getting picked up. So if you're inside your head and you're hearing things such as, this is a great day, but this is a great day. You use the same exact phrase, this is a great day. How you're saying it completely matters. It's the tone that we're talking to ourselves as well as the vocabulary that we're choosing. So if you think, I'm really smart. I'm really intelligent. I'm really smart. I'm really intelligent. There's such a shift. And even as I'm saying it, I'm sure you and your listeners can hear the difference of adding that energy to it and taking that energy away and adding a different energy to it. It completely shapes how we move throughout the day. What we say and how we say it shapes everything that we're doing. So yeah, team, you're doing a great job. Yeah, team, you're doing a great job. It matters. Literally, what you say and how you say it matters, but more how you say it. It's the tone. So especially when you start to work through the voices in your head, notice the tone. And another thing that I also encourage people to do is question it. So if you often, if this thought, this thought used to come up very frequently for me, I'm stupid and I can't do anything. Really? You can't do anything? Anything? Well, I can feed myself. Okay, yeah. So, okay, well, I can walk. Okay, well, I can do this. Okay, well, I can do that. So as you start to question it, as you start to point out what you can do, you'll notice the shift and you're going to start listing things that you can do, that you can accomplish. And it's going to challenge that narrative, which is a great thing. We want to start reframing it. We want to start challenging it. Sometimes, at least for me, when I would say affirmations of, you know, I'm healthy, wealthy, and abundant, I would hear this voice going, no, you're not. Even though I'm trying to identify it, that background voice of going, no, you're not. You're lying. That's the voice I want to talk to. The one in the background that's, ch that's trying to be heard. It really wants to be heard. And it needs to also be talked to. And it needs to also have these reframes so that we can literally move through the world more effectively and more efficiently and show up how we want to show up. I think that voice needs to be smacked every now and then. <laughs> the, the voice in my head is not as nice as yours. <laughs> so, sometimes my, my inner voice is definitely can still get out of hand. The difference is now I've built toolbox. I have a toolbox, excuse me. I have a variety of tools to know what to pull out, when to pull it out, and how to use it. It's about building, building, building these toolbox, this toolbox so that when they show up, it's not that they're never going to show up. It's not that I never have a negative thought, of which I used to think that was possible. Not so much. But when they show up, I now know what to do. Whether it's talk to a, a trusted person who's going to hear me 
and understand what I'm saying rather than judge me for what I'm saying. There's a difference. Or saying, you know what, let me sit down with my journal and really talk this out. Or, you know what, that voice is telling me lies and it needs to hit the road. It, these are all tools and techniques that I teach my clients, I teach my students, but they're all ones that are out there. We can absolutely learn how to find harmony in our internal environment by reframing those voices. She said harmony. She's my favorite guest because we're <laughs> talking about harmonious here. So <laughs> we should wrap the episode there. No, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> we, we do have to wrap up soon, but I'm, I'm curious because I think the, the first step to recognizing the voice, recognizing that the voice is trying to destroy you for some reason, um, and then taking ownership of it and, and helping reframe and build those positive thoughts, the positive voice. How do you, how do you get somebody to first recognize the voice? Because I think a lot of us will, and let me say this, because I, I built this show for the me of five, six, seven years ago, when I first started listening to podcasts and trying to grow my business. And I was listening to all this information and I would hear it and it was fantastic. And these amazing guests and I would go try it and it wouldn't work. And I'd say, you're an idiot. You can't do it. Try the next episode, dummy. And I'd be like, ah, but these people made it sound so easy. So what is the, that, that in my head was trying to help me. It was trying to protect me. So how do we just completely disassociate from the thought entirely and say, no, I'm writing the story. I will control the voice, not all the time, but I will write that narrative and, and rewrite the inner critic. Where do you start? What is the tool in the toolbox for that sort of message? Especially when they're coming up for, that's such a good question. When they're coming up and they're really harsh, what do you want me to know? It is for protection. It is because that part of us doesn't want us to fail because we had felt failure before and oh my gosh, it felt like death wasn't actually death, but to ourself, it was really intense. And it's really, really is protection. So if you can notice that there's often two voices, possibly even three, if you're talking about the one coming out of you at the time, you might hear a negative one and you might hear one that's like, no, keep going. No, keep going. Turn up the volume on that one that's a little bit softer. That's saying, no, keep going. That one that keeps encouraging you and try to notice that you can turn down the volume. And when you notice that you have the ability to control them, it's just that which one has the microphone right now? And if you want to talk to that one that is criticizing you, because, you know, it is, it, it can keep coming up for sure. They want to tell you something. That voice really does want to share something with you. Is it going to serve you? How else can it help you? And do your best to start making allies with it. Because when you can start to say, okay, thank you. I appreciate that. What do I need to know? What's the most important? And really leaning into that discomfort of what if we fail? Oh my God, what if we fail? That's an actual fear. That's something that really does resonate. And we can't just be like, nah, you don't know what you're talking about. Lean into it. Okay, what if we do? What's the worst that's going to happen? Am I going to stop breathing? No. Did anybody ever die of failure of trying to do a podcast? Well, no. Okay. Did other people successfully do this? Yeah. Is there something that maybe I don't know right now? Possibly. As you start questioning it and talking to it, you're going to start to hear different pieces of information and that can help you move through it. Mm. You just sparked something, uh, a memory of working with a friend of mine who specializes in, in leadership and building teams. And he said, Everybody wants to get rid of the negative person on the team because they kill the vibe, especially in startups and high energy team cultures. And he says that that is always the person I look to first because they're going to keep the rest of you alive because they're going to be the one person that says, guys, we should not spend $20 million on retrofitting the office with pool tables. That's a <laughs> bad investment. <laughs> He's going to keep the company afloat. And it's so true in your mind too. I never, I never thought of this, but I, I literally just connected the dots as you were speaking. Love that example. It's a phenomenal example. Yeah. It's there to serve you. You don't need to have the volume up all the time. They don't need to be leading the meeting, Yeah, but you should check in with them. Definitely. Oh, check in with them. They don't need to lead, but you should check in with them. 
You yeah, steal that. That's a great tagline. Lenora, I'm giving that We're going to gonna you. bumper sticker that one. <laughs> that's fantastic. Well, this episode has been too much fun, just like I said it would be, uh, at least for me. I don't know about you, the audience and the listener, but we're having a great time over here. And Lenora has tossed around the idea of a co-podcast. So I don't know. I don't know. We'll keep you posted, but it would be way too much fun mm -hmm. as well. So Lenora, thank you for coming on. This has been this has been a great episode and it's a topic I think a lot of people really need to hear. Where can we learn more about you? Take the first step to work with you, whatever that is. Where can we find you online? It has been a phenomenal time talking with you. Thank you so much for having me. And I would love to do, we can even do a, a short series. That would be super cool. Oh, okay. Um, I remember that. The best way to reach me is at dtbhorizons.com and it stands for determined to be horizons.com. I was so prepared for this episode, I forgot to ask ahead of time. So it's not on the screen, but it will be in the show notes, wherever you're watching or listening. Uh, I hope you subscribe because we do this every single day of the week with amazing people like Lenora. We don't always have this much fun, but I try to. So subscribe, leave it in the comments. What were your takeaways from this episode? And uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for listening. I do this for you and we want to make sure you grow your business with this little bite-sized advice of business advice at lunch. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Launch. Thanks for listening.